Since about February 20th, I've been parked right here in my bus at CTP. You're gonna end up eating a steady diet of government cheese and living in a van down by the river. Which may mean you'll actually be an NFL quarterback. Welcome to That's Good Sports. I am Brandon Perna and so much NFL news has happened in the last 24 hours. I'll spare you with the long winded intro with the shitty jokes that cause thousands and thousands of people to not subscribe to my channel every episode. Instead, I will fill you in on everything from Trey Lance to Julio Jones to Gardner Minshew's home, which is a van. Let's do it. That's good sports. Perfect. Good. One more time. Broncos country. Let's ride. Broncos country, let's ride. Broncos country, let's ride. My first pick is Lamar Jackson, who I'm gonna start at running back. Just kidding, I'm not racist. Wait, what's, what's that? Oh, just my writing partner and podcast co-host and dear friend Will Keys has started a sports gaming channel. Here's a taste. And honestly, everything looks really, really good. They even added referee Bill Vinovich to the game. I wonder if he fucks up calls in video games too. Bill, if you're watching, I still think about this dog shit call from 2012. So if you want to see the rest of that video and more of the sports gaming videos Will's doing, subscribe to his channel, which is called Will Sucks at Games. Please, just don't give him more subs than me. I am fucked if that happens. All right, new Jets tight end, CJ Uzama broke the news. The news that Zach Wilson is officially Time Magazine's person of the year. Wilson joins the likes of Pope Francis, Albert Einstein, and the Apollo 8 astronauts. And like those brave astronauts, this is Zach Wilson every time he thinks about his mom's friend's Milky Ways. He may look young, but he knows exactly where that nebula is. According to TMZ, former Raiders first round draft pick Damon Arnett was arrested in Florida after cops say they found a cocaine-like substance in his pocket during a traffic stop. How often is a cocaine-like substance not cocaine? It's creatine, officer. I swear, it's just creatine for my workouts. This is actually an all-time dumb arrest, too. Arnett was stopped once Monday night, was cited for driving with a suspended license. Then, hours later, they saw him still driving around in the same fucking car. This is the second arrest in six months for Arnett. The first one occurred after uh, Arnett allegedly pulled a gun on a valet back in Las Vegas, although those charges were dropped shortly after his current arrest. Arnett was cut by the Raiders in 2021 after he posted a video making death threats while wielding a gun. Uh, still, that is far from the worst thing a 2020 Raiders first round draft pick did that season. Naturally, the Chiefs picked him up and even they said this is too much following the valet incident and also cut the 25 year old corner after just nine days with the team. Wide receiver Julio Jones has signed with yeah, you guessed it, the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. That's not even the most interesting story coming out of Tampa, though. It's that Chris Godwin might be ready to start the season after tearing his ACL in week 15 of last season. As a refresher, the Bucks also signed tight end Kyle Rudolph to pair with Cameron Brait, and we'll have Mike Evans, possibly Chris Godwin, Julio Jones, and Russell Gage to catch passes from Tom Brady week one. Essentially, the Bucks are stacking up at the position to try and avoid what happened last year when they lost both uh, Antonio Brown and Chris Godwin to close out the season. But at age 33, and after two injury riddled seasons, I have no idea how effective Julio will be down at the schoolyard. What I do know is if Julio Jones makes another catch like this in the Super Bowl, but from Tom Brady, Falcons fans might renounce God, and I would not blame them for doing so. Aaron Rodgers did show up to Packers training camp in cosplay. Con Aaron Rodgers arrived as Nick Cage from Con Air, which I covered in a YouTube short yesterday. I hate to point this out, but Aaron Rodgers' career is starting to mimic that of Nick Cage. People forget Cage won a fucking Oscar in 1996 for his prophetic portrayal of John Gruden in Leaving Las Vegas. 
And it feels like it's been that long since Aaron Rodgers won a Super Bowl for the Packers. My question for you watching, and let me know in the comments is, what is more likely to happen again? Nick Cage winning another Oscar or Aaron Rodgers winning his second Super Bowl? And don't pretend like that's an easy question to answer. Cage's last two films, Pig and The Unbearable Weight of Massive Talent are playoff caliber movies. Pig, though, is how I imagine Aaron Rodgers spends his offseason. But the title, The Unbearable Weight of Massive Talent, is what I'd call the Aaron Rodgers 30 for 30 documentary. And as I was writing this, I saw Kyle Brandt do an entire bit comparing their careers on Good Morning Football. God damn it. Screw me. Screw me right in the buttocks, NFL Network. Seattle Seahawks running back Chris Carson has retired from football after five seasons in the NFL. And no, he's not choosing retirement over playing with Drew Locke. Carson is stepping away because he hasn't been able to fully recover from cervical fusion surgery. And you are witnessing live the moment I learned that men also have cervixes. Wait, what? Oh, that's a, it's a neck procedure, damn. The good news is he will get a few million dollars in injury designation payment from the Seahawks, and I hope he has a healthy life outside of football. The 49ers have made an announcement. Um, but we have uh, moved on to Trey. We're starting camp out this way. Um, we think Jimmy would have been traded if the surgery didn't happen. Welcome to the Trey area. It's La Lance time. This is one of those moves that is both surprising and not surprising. Jimmy Garoppolo did pass his physical today, which could open the doors for a trade. And if history is any indicator, the Carolina Panthers seem like the only team willing to continually give third tier QBs another chance, all at the same time. Moving on to Trey Lance in San Francisco is the right move after the Niners gave up all that draft capital to acquire him. But since a trade for Jimmy G didn't happen in the spring, I thought the smart play would be to keep him on the roster if he were willing to accept the backup role uh, for the final year in his deal with the 49ers. Trey Lance with Jimmy G as your insurance plan is a good spot to be in for the season, but we'll see what happens. Now last weekend, Kyler Murray signed a massive extension with the Cardinals that should keep him in the desert until at least 2028. I talked about that in Monday's news episode, however, some lawyer types have done some digging on his contract and discovered some very revealing clauses the Cardinals put in, which if broken could trigger some defaults in the contract. First of all, Kyler Murray cannot play baseball. The contract triggers a default that if he participates in any type of baseball related activity, including without limitation, a tryout, workout, practice, scrimmage, exhibition, or game for any baseball team in any baseball league. So that means he cannot join the A's, the team that drafted him in the first round of the MLB draft back in 2018. Not sure why he'd want to play for the A's, though considering they're currently 36 and 63 and have the second worst record in baseball. Yeah, no, he definitely, he wouldn't. Why did I read it that way? He would not want to play there. But here's the clause that caught some headlines. The contract mandates four hours a week of independent study. And all that means is he needs to get on his iPad and watch game film for just four hours a week. Somewhere, four hour work week author Tim Ferriss is fully erect. When you think about it, four hours of game film a week is not much. I feel like some quarterbacks watch four hours of game film a day. That's a light morning for Peyton Manning. Now the contract states that while he's studying film, he can't also be doing anything that's distracting like watching television, playing video games, or browsing the internet. Apparently the iPad can tell, like when your grandma is looking down on you from heaven, watching you masturbate. Now this is not a typical clause for quarterbacks. That's been confirmed. Most of them don't need to be told to do their job. This clause is essentially a public admission that the Cardinals aren't happy with Murray's work ethic and that they want him to buckle down. Now Kyler Murray himself admitted that he doesn't watch a lot of film. If you remember, he said some of the most 
cocky shit you'll ever hear a QB say. I think I was blessed with the cognitive skills to just go out there and see it before it happens. He said that in a radio interview last year, continued, I'm not one of those guys that's going to sit there and kill myself watching film. That's really crazy to me because Kyler is actually already a good quarterback with minimal film study. He's a two-time pro bowler and avoids game tape like it's season two of True Detective. Now what happens? Is he all of a sudden going to become the best quarterback in the league when he spends four hours a week learning what the opposing team's defense does? Or does he not study tape because he can't see over the line of scrimmage, therefore he has never seen what a defense does? I don't know. My favorite thing though about Kyler is he is very good. And he is a player with a lot to prove. And he may be the only person who thinks he does not have anything to prove. Joe Burrow will miss some time because he's having his appendix removed. Burrow is expected to miss about a week of training camp, but will be ready to go for the regular season uh, and possibly preseason if he plays. This is a friendly reminder of how utterly useless the appendix is. A high ankle sprain is more severe of an injury than the removal of an organ. The appendix as an organ is really the Urban Meyer of organs. It does nothing. And suddenly, if you don't remove it, you might die. Good news coming out of Jaguars training camp. Apparently, players are very excited that Doug Peterson is indeed not Urban Meyer. Doug Peterson, well, he's gonna have to be like the liver filtering out all the bullshit that Shad Khan and Trent Baalke throw into the system. Because if he doesn't, that team is gonna die, choking on its own vomit. Now Gardner Minshew posted a video on his Instagram account that is mostly a promo for a fitness company he trained with called CTP, but also he admitted that he's been living in a bus since February and adopting some hippie tendencies. I've really picked up some hippie tendencies. Please don't let it be playing the acoustic guitar. Please don't let it be playing the acoustic guitar. And one of them has been playing the guitar. Damn it, it's the acoustic guitar. Okay, so it's more of a bus than a van, but the fact that an NFL quarterback spent his entire off season living in a renovated former inmate transfer vehicle since February is badass. Well, I'm so excited to drive this thing back to Philly and get after it. Go Birds. Gardner Minshew is the real version of who Aaron Rodgers pretends to be. Minshew is actually selling this bus for $25,000 which seems like a pretty good deal in this market. If I get $25,000 in Patreon donations in the next 24 hours, I will make a competitive bid for the bus. Patreon.com slash that's good sports. And don't forget our Patreon Zoom hangout is tonight. That said, Gardner Minshew is still the most intriguing backup quarterback on earth. I hope to God he gets a chance to start somewhere someday. Not necessarily in Philly because I'm, I'm rooting for Jalen Hurts, but this Uncle Rico lifestyle adds to his status as an NFL folk hero. Remember, he tried to break his hand with the hammer in college to keep his redshirt eligibility, won games as a Jaguars QB, rocked Mississippi mud flat. Posted these images of himself on Instagram and now is preparing to be an NFL quarterback by living in a van down by a fitness center. Well, la de frickin' da! God, we love Gardner. Oh. Please subscribe here on YouTube. Also, check out my 10 heaviest touchdowns in NFL history video. It is currently tanking, but it's a really, really good video, damn it. Please, come on, come on. I'm scared, I'm getting scared. YouTube's gonna kill me.